In this video, we're going to explicitly apply the level K solution concept to what is known as the beauty contest game. So in this game, let's say there are a thousand people in the room. Now everybody picks a number between zero and a hundred. That's their, everybody's strategy. The payoff is whoever is closest to half the average, this one half is key, it can't be closest to the average, whoever is closest to half of the average wins, let's say, um, $1,000. Doesn't really matter what the payoff is here. So this is the game, very simple. You want to pick a number that is closest to half of the average. So let's look at this first from a Nash perspective. Now this is an interesting phenomenon here. And the first thing I want to point out is that it's never in anybody's best interest to pick a number over 50. Why is that? Because the only way that 50 can be close to half of the average is if everybody else picks 100. Okay? So all players know that it's never in anybody's best interest to pick above 50. Hopefully that makes sense. But now we can take that to another round of iteration. All players know that it's never in anybody's best interest to pick a number above 50. So if nobody is willing to pick a number above 50, the highest that half of the average can be is 25. Ah, but what do we see here? Everybody now knows that it's never in anybody's best interest to pick a number above 25. So if it's never in anybody's best interest to pick a number above 25, it's impossible for half of the average to be above 12 and a half. So now, as you see this goes, if the highest half of the average can be is 12 and a half, it's never in anybody's best interest to pick a number above six and a quarter, 6.25. And we can take this all the way down and the Nash equilibrium turns out to be everybody just picking zero. Now, as you can imagine, this is probably not what happens in a laboratory, but let's examine this from a level K perspective. So let's assume that the level zero player randomizes uniformly. Remember, a level zero player is non-strategic. It's just somebody that chooses an actum, it's just somebody that chooses an action randomly. So if a level zero player randomizes uniformly, what is the average? Well, on it, the average is going to be 50. The, the average of uniform distribution from 0 to 100 is 50. Okay? What if a, so what would a layer level 1 player do? A level 1 player would do. Well, if a level 1 player thinks that everybody else is randomizing uniformly between 0 and 100, the average would be 50, so the level 1 player plays 25. Okay? What would a level 2 player do? Well, a level two player assumes everybody else is a level one player and then chooses its best action. So a level two player thinks that everybody else in the room is assuming that everybody else in the room is randomizing uniformly so that all level one players would play 25. So a level two player would play 12.5. And as you see the pattern, a level three player would play 6.25. And this goes on and on until the levels get higher and higher, and this number gets closer and closer to zero. So one question you might be interested in is, how do players actually play? Well, a study that I will provide in the references was actually able to estimate the level of players. And what it found was that the level zero contained 37% of the players. The level one players Level 1 contained 47% of the players. Level 2 contained 15% of the players. And level 3 was a mere 1% of the players. So there's a couple So there are a couple interesting things about these numbers. Number 1 is that level 0 players exist. This means some people even though they're playing a game don't even realize that they're playing a game. 
So this is about as far from Nash equilibrium as you can get. There are some players that are in the literature, maybe unfairly called unsophisticated players, and that is not an insignificant proportion. One third of the players are non-sophisticated players, more than one third, 37%. Also interesting to see is that no players were above level three. Uh, level three was the highest that you get. And in fact, level three, and for that matter, level two was even fairly rare. The majority of the players are either level one or level zero, which indicates how far from Nash some true games might actually be. So this concludes our section on bounded rationality. The reference will provide several different ways to re-examine bounded rationality from other cognitive biases, heuristics, and other ways that game theory explicitly treats bounded rationality. I hope you enjoyed this section of the tutorial as it provides a new light and a more realistic view on the world and game theory.